Eddie Hearns, Mashroom Sport, Jason Gavin, Jordy Raw, Tommy Coyle, Master Dodd, Daniel Viswela, Jojo Dan, Snigger Smig, Eggington, Scott Quick, Pig Face, Crusty Neck, Anthony Jet. Johnny Ryder, Swifty Smith, Tesco Joe, Amicons Jim, Bradley Saunders, Hick, but Martin Murray, Title Shot, IFL, Fight Pass, Kelbrook out there getting slashed, Gary Cornish, Silver Title, Josh Warrington's wedding. We hit a right boxing, it was always fun, it's just a hard on it. We hit a right boxing, but we hold a like it, so it's hard to fight it. Jim Watt, Nick Holling, he don't know a fucking thing. Adam Smith, weird neck, Prince Naz made him cry. Polly's on the payroll, AJ's on the Nandrolone. Ticket counts advertised to millions by Sky. Diamond Belt, Unify, every word's a total lie. Trade fights, Brian King, MGM earns in the ring. Gallagher, Dog Pound, the RSPCA's come round. Leeds, Bob, Dexter Park, Rogers had a nose job. <laughs> Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, a voice of hardcore boxing. Now, I'm just waiting for a phone call from Rico and uh, Rico Elie, my pal, good friend of mine from Finland, he lives in London and uh, we'll be, uh, he's going to ring me at 5 o'clock I think, no, 25 minutes past 5 actually oh he's ringing me now, so so it's all good, it's all good stuff, all positive stuff and Here we go. What do you hear? What do you say? <laughs> How are you doing? We're celebrating Eddie Hearn's 40th birthday today. Eddie's 40 today, is he? Yeah. What a 40th he's going to have. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be no Vegas party where AJ and 40 hangers on. Oh, he's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't you send me some earlier? Where he was telling talk sports about our read against uh, AJ two is bigger than you against Wilder. What? I don't think that is, is it? Yeah. No, he's uh I think what it is with them now, mate, that it's just damage limitation now in it for them. Yeah, but you know, going out to talk sports and everywhere else just chatting absolute nonsense, that doesn't really Anyone anyway, that puts more pressure on AJ to perform. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It's uh, it's a funny one. It's a funny one this week, of course. Uh, it is also very funny as well. But it's a, it's an odd one, should I say? Uh, where they go from here now? Because the way I look at it is this: if they jump in Ruiz again, the Hearns haven't got a safety net, have they? If they lose. Yeah. Right, all they've got is two more dates off off Sky. Now, yeah. Ingram's just reported something I've heard online uh, that uh, Al Eamon's in talks with Sky, so I don't know where he's got that from. But yeah, but, you know, Sky can't stick with, you know, Matchroom because they haven't delivered them under this contract. And also... I don't think Joshua will ever do the same numbers he did against Klitschko, so he's a declining commodity. Whether he wins or not, 
he yeah. can't be the best heavyweight in the world unless he beats Wilder or Fury again because they're yeah. two undefeated guys or the winner of they fight basically has to beat that guy yeah I think that uh, you're probably right there I think that Joshua He's on slide. I think the reason they went to America is uh, that they study the numbers and that, don't they? And they would have known that we're not fighting Wilder or Fury, that a lot of people might not have been interested. I mean, they said they were going to take a Ricky Atten army out there, didn't they? But they didn't really, did they? No, and you know, someone like Katie Taylor will bring some people, Irish people and stuff. And yeah, there's a lot of Irish in New York. Yeah. How do you know, you know, how do you know? How many are British fans? It's all just chat, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to know how many actually did fly out that, that were Joshua fans because if he, if he, they were ever going to give up them stadium sellouts in the UK if Joshua were, 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 that, uh, were, were doing them numbers. And I think that they thought, Do you know what, we might just not be able to pull this off fighting uh, at Wembley. You know, against Dillian White, that's what I think, mate. Yeah, exactly. I think Dillian White dropped a plan of not fighting him, though, do you? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? I think Dillian White dropped a plan of not fighting him. Yeah, he did. Because at least they could have kept everything in house like Eddie likes to do. So, you know, even if Joshua would have got beat by White, you know, there's a big rematch in the UK, the winner goes and fights someone in the US. Uh, now they basically... You know, they'd be a bent over by Al Heyman. Yeah, 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 I see what you mean, mate. I just think that they're in a, in a lot of trouble in that match room. Well, who's who's the anchor for the show? So if you think about the pay-per-view shows that they can do where they fight as the A-side, who's going to be the guy that's going to do that apart from Joshua? Even the white Rebus fight, it's not a bad fight, but, you know, it's not going to do big numbers. How is Sky going to be happy with that? Well, I just think that uh, I just think that Sky, <coughs> we're, uh, are on, uh, they're declining as well. I mean, well, when Eddie Fern first started off on pay per view, right, with Audley Harrison, the first yeah. pay per view, it, it basically it, it it stunk, didn't it? It did, and then we did a pay per view for two years. Yeah. In England, over two years, wasn't it? And yeah. the first one that the one that came back was Vladimir Hay. That stunk, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Hay went on to have two more stinkers on Sky, didn't he? Well, definitely. Yeah. yeah so David Hay is now the stinkinator, right? I know Ultra Tech Sports Raw calls him cost cutter. Well, I call him the stinkinator. <laughs> Biggest con man in boxing, David Hay. He kept putting Instagram videos out every day to his fans. And that's what it's all about now. He does numbers on social media. People buy into the hype of David Hay training in a gym. And that's it. And he's got his six pack back. And oh, he's fit. Look, he won't match fit, worry, obviously. But, you know, I don't really believe um, that much about the social, you know, social media numbers. Because at the end of the day, you have to follow the guy and be into boxing to then pay the 20 quid to watch this guy fight which you probably do anyway so it's not like these videos are going viral like while there's a knockout against brazil and then you go okay i want to see this guy fight i don't know much about boxing i think it's all just one of these things that people just use like oh this guy does a lot of numbers on social media like someone like josh kelly when he's doing his pad work with adam Booth. but how many people are going to pay 20 quid to watch josh kelly just based on a pad work video yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah, and I, I think that a lot of these people now are faking the numbers. <clears throat> For example, uh, I, I'm not going to say you, because I'm I'm, uh, I don't want to rub yeah, his nose no, in it, but a certain yeah. person who we know is has got like so many thousands of views on his, on his thing, whatever he does on YouTube, and he's hardly got any comments, and then... A few days after, he's got 10% uh, of the views and more comments than when he had 100 and odd thousand. So I don't get that. <laughs> no. They're doing it to have a bit of a sense of importance. and They must think that everybody who deals in 
marketing and banks and financials and stuff like that don't know how a computer works and how, how hey, sorry no I was just saying it's, it's interesting because while they said in my interview um, you know the one that he did after the Joshua defeat mm. the one that I put it on to you and he said um, yeah you know that Matchroom have been paying media in the US to cover Joshua and stuff if they're doing that I mean it's been floating around this idea but you know, they must have like boss that just like all the matchroom stuff. And you see it and I see it, but we comment something on Eddie Hearns, you know, when he puts out an answer, we say, you know, it's Baba, as you call it. Yeah. Uh, suddenly, all these people were two followers or five followers that started Twitter a few months ago, start attacking you and, you know, start downgrading your comments so that nobody's critical. And every time Eddie posts something, wait minutes. Thousands of people are sharing and liking, even if it's a small hall show, a new yeah. hall show, next day show. Yeah, that, that's what's been going on. Uh... We know that's what's been going on because we understand the game, don't we? We've been around it long enough now. Uh, exactly. It's been going on for a long time, that now, and there's a few people broke ranks and said, yeah, I've had tickets off Eddie, you wanted me to put stuff out, but I know for a fact that there's YouTube channels out there that are there to push the macho narrative, and they're getting favours, you know, like, there's certain people who've got YouTube accounts, they're getting invited to after parties and they're getting uh, into their into Eddie Hearn's circle because they're doing views and he needs them people because we, he, he is addicted to social media, that's how he's built Matchroom. It's all built on a lie though because Joshua's manufactured, isn't he? It is because um, going back to the fight, uh, you know, all the frailties that we've been saying about Joshua for years were exposed, so, you know, he's technically limited, doesn't take, he's not able to take the centre of the ring against a smaller man, and also, it's not only about losing, because obviously he wants to see the best fight against the best, but he effectively, at the end of the fight, when the ref was there, he, he didn't want to go on, you know, he just didn't want to go on, and that's mental weakness, that's something you can't train out of a guy. Colin Hart said this after Klitschko, uh beat him, he said that he's there to be beat him. After Klitschko lost against AJ, sorry, Colin Hart said Joshua's there to be beat. He's there to be hit and he's there to be beat. Tyson Fury said it now. Yeah. Could you imagine what Tyson would have done to Joshua the other night? Even what Dillian White would have done to him. This version of Dillian yeah, White. Yeah, this version of Dillian White ices uh, the big dosser. He ices because him. He, <laughs> he knows that you can hit him in the body. He knows that and he's hurt him before. I mean, this version of Dillian White motivated. That's why I don't think he took the fight because he just said... You know, I don't want to do a four or five week camp. I don't want to be chucked in there just to be, you know, to have a fight. But he probably regrets it. But, but this version of Dillian White would have stopped Joshua quicker than Ruiz. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And like, you've got to understand, right, that when all's said and done, from now on, when I place my bets at the bookies, I'm going to go with my gut instinct, and I'm just going to look at the records and I'm going to see, well, who have they actually beat? So, let's have a look. I'm just going to get Box Check up now. I know this off by art anyway, uh, from when he from when he got, from when when got he fought Dillian White, but uh, I'm going to go through Joshua's uh, record here uh, from, from the beginning, and I'm going to show you how they've ma manufactured him now. And I have, I have, have these de debates with Dennis all the time, and... And and he's he's educated me on a lot of things, and he said, "Well, look, that's how they do it." And he showed me things, and it's it's quite interesting. That, and I want to show you. We didn't. He, we didn't, We actually didn't speak about Joshua. We, we spoke about how Frank Warren did it with Ricky Hatton, you know, with the WBU belt. Wait while they were waiting yeah. for Costa Zoo to get hold, to get yeah. old. And obviously, once Ricky Hatton beat Costa Zoo, then he signed Ricky Hatton, didn't he? When Technically, he was on his way to sign for Barry Hearn, wasn't he, on motorway? Yeah, and turned, he turned, turned around. Dennis rung up and said, uh, well, it's, Dennis has said it on interview with me, look, there's 300,000 there, come and sign for me, and he did. So, Barry Hearn didn't want to pay, they want everything on cheap. Now, Joshua turned pro, right? He fought Emmanuel Leo in 2013. There's never fought since. There's never fought since. Hang on a second, yeah. 
Emmanuel Leo, 8 and 0, right, and that was how long? 16 months after Olympics, was it? 15, 16 months? Yeah. So what he's done is at the Olympics, he's come back two and a half stone bigger, he's fighting an undefeated guy, so it all looks good to the fans, doesn't it? He's no to yeah. naught, that guy's 8 and 0. Right, he ices him. Then he fights a guy, then he fights two guys with losing records. Can four, I jump in at that point? Hey? Just to say, Leo has never fought since that fight. Yeah, yeah. He's a, like that. He's a bit like these guys that Davis Hay digged up for his combat. You know, these guys that have records that are just there to be sold, or like Tom Schwartz is for Fury. Yeah. Yeah, well, exactly. So, we Paul Butler's up. Paul Butlin's up next. 14 and 20, 20, 14 and 19. And he won two fights out of his out of his neck. Eight fights. So he would never he he would he were useless as well. These I'm not gonna say the bums because the boxers, but these are all feeding frenzies for Josh. Then he fought Hivoji Kisiek, right, at your call. He had a losing record five and six. Uh he 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 lost fucking more than he won after that. Then he fought the power Dorian the Power Darch. Oh my god, 7 and 2, he did him. Hector Al. Grove's undercard, right? No, we're not up to that yet. No, we're not up to that yet. He fought uh, Matt Legg on Frotch Groves. Then he fought Hector Alfredo Avila. Oh, he, he'd had 15 losses out of 38 fights. Matt Legg, he was 7 and 2. That were on Frotch Groves rematch. Frotch Groves 2. Yeah, I was I was there that night at Wembley, and I, was, I came in early, so I was watching it because it was pretty low in the card. But I felt it weird because Matt Legg felt like he was a fan. He was hogging him, and you know, having mm. well done after every round, and it was just one of those where Matt Legg was happy to be there to be a payday. After that, he fought uh, Kus Erich, Konstantin Erich, twenty-one and nine. Then he fought Dennis Backoff, he'd had 9 defeats. Then he fought Michael Sprott, he'd had 22 defeats. Jason Gavin, 19 defeats. Rafael Zambano, 10 defeats. Kevin King, Kevin Safety Pin Johnson, he would on slide. He'd about, he's pushing 40 year old. And then he fought the immense Gary fucking Cornish, uh, who basically were 21 and 0 and um, his best win was and I quote uh, Sam Sexton in a life and death but that were after Joshua his best win leading up to Joshua was oh they all are losing records look at that oh my god oh my god uh, I couldn't really say who, 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 who his best win is up to Joshua. You could probably say Marino goals, couldn't you? Yeah, I think Cornish lost to Sexton, didn't he? That was a box station show. Oh, sorry, yeah, 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 sorry, yeah. He fought, he's you now the best guy he'd, he'd done well against, I meant, sorry, was Sexton. Yeah, yeah, I've got it here, yeah. But the, he'd, uh, he'd not really beat anybody, had, had he really? I mean, pff, do, you, do you know what I mean? Larry the Tank. Oh, Obama, whatever he's called. Larry Latang, Obama, wow. Dave Allen beat him, you know, on, on a Peter Fury when Peter Fury trained him. Larry, big, La big Larry, the big doorman. Yeah. Larry's the big doorman, Larry. If you've not drank your drink at midnight, Larry will tell you to leave. <laughs> big Larry, the doorman. Exactly. But uh, he, he would. He have, Larry's been in, in Fury camp sparring Tyson and. Uh, all, Huey and all of them, and uh, he's a good laugh like Larry, like, but uh, he's, he was never going to do anything, worry. But I'd say his best wins Marino goals. Uh, I mean, he went to points where he had it, Larry uh, Alabama was, so, but I said his best fight really, Sam Sexton, but it were uh, a, cl a close one, won it, the Sam Sexton one, apparently. Yeah, it was, it were. Uh, 115, 140, yeah, very close, very close, but it were, uh, it were in Scotland, wasn't it? I mean, people say that he won, don't they, Cornish, and and that he got he got robbed like it. There were only a, there were no in it like it, could have gone either way, but, 
he got robbed on his, in his own town, and that's probably why they didn't give him a decision because it were up in it were in Edinburgh. But like up till then, you couldn't really say you'd been in with anybody. But twenty one and oh looks good on the CV. Then Dillian White, who basically is a novice in it then. Yeah, and he sort of trained himself, didn't he? Trained himself, he yeah, was having to sell... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dillian White. And then he's got a gift in Charlie Martin. I've just done an interview with Dennis uh, yesterday, and we agreed on that. It was a gift. Dominic Brazil turned pro when he was nearly 28. Eric Molina, a school teacher. Vladimir in his 42nd year. Takam. Hey. Vladimir came off the loss and... As you say, two years on the settee. 18 months on the settee. Tackham, a late replacement, 12 days notice. Uh, and, and do you know what? I thought Joshua were going to gas in that fight. You know, I think I think the referee, which what if I remember, the one and only Phil Edwards, let me have a look. Good old Phil Edwards, Team Matchroom FC. He is, Ma Phil Edwards is Matchroom FC. Always has been, always will be. Just like Ter Terry O'Connor is uh, Frank Warren FC. He is Matchroom FC, Phil Edwards. Uh, then you've got Joseph Parker, who wasn't allowed to go to work by the referee, which was Giuseppe Quarteroni. Whoever he is, I don't know, but who to say he wasn't got at? Joshua played it safe with that one. Now, and then you've got Povetkin. Now, he was in his 40th year. In his 40th year. Now, all these fighters that he's had at world title level, they've all been undefeated or hardly had any losses in it. All looks good, doesn't it, really, on paper? Yeah. You know, like, let's have a look how many losses. So you've got Charlie Martin, no losses, Eric Molina, three, Vladimir, four, that's seven, Carlos Takam had three, that's ten losses, Povetkin, one, Andy Ruiz, one. So you've got twelve losses and a draw coming from all these guys who are getting in with Joshua, but that doesn't tell the full story when you scrutinise it. And like I said, I've been screaming this for, for a few years now, but... I, I had Andy Ruiz to win in round one and my partner Nicola had him to win in round two. Uh, so we both had a bet on and obviously we lost our money but you know nobody had Ruiz to win, he just didn't look big enough, he was out of shape, he took it at a, 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 a late, a late uh, it took it late, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So. And what does that tell about Joshua rather than what it tells about Ruiz? Because I wouldn't back Ruiz against Wilder, I wouldn't back him against Fury. Wouldn't back him against White. Probably wouldn't back him even against someone like Hergovitz or Joe, Joe Joyce. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you, you you wouldn't, would you? And you know, Joshua, the, they've been selected opponents, and Robert McCracken, he has a lot to say. He'll know what's going on in that gym, Robert McCracken. But what I what I want to point out is this and I've been banging on about it all week and I'm going to have my fucking day in the sun mate I'm going to have my day in the sun with these fuckers you what? so you should yeah listen mate these fuckers right they stopped me having press passes they fucking rung my house up threatening me or they've had people do it on their fucking phone do you know what I mean now Eddie and his dad have to be fair like they sent me emails saying that the number have been cloned and all that. So I don't know what to make of all that, but it's going to take a little bit more than that to put fucking to scare me off, mate. Do you know what I mean? I'm a bit long in too. Yeah. There's talkers and there's pro cocktail walkers. Now, this is how I look at it, right? He's the biggest con I've ever seen in boxing. The amount that the the, the amount of conning that they've done here. It's it's on biblical purpose. It's biblical size. It's massive, and you go through all this record here, and it's embarrassing. Like I said, Dillian White, novice. Mar well, they'll start at the world title fights. Charlie Martin, a gift. Brazil. Fucking hell! Why did they sell that? Oh, he's big, and he went to Olympics. That's it. Eric Molina. Oh my God! But he's been in with Wilder so. You have to give him a pass on it if others are doing it, don't you? Vladimir, old man, 
Tackham late replacement, it was a bad stoppage. Parker, referee, had a shocker. And then and Joshua couldn't do not win because he had a bit of movement. And that should have been the signs then to say that they're going to struggle against movers and, you know, people who are technically good. Povetkin showed flaws in him, but he wasn't big enough to pull it off. And then you've got Andy, I think Perfecting came to lose myself, like. And then you've got Andy Ruiz, and do you know what? Fair play to that kid. He turned up, and what a nice guy he is as well. Yeah, and I, I'm team Andy Ruiz now. He turned up, and he got stuck in, didn't he? He did. And then Mexicans are tough kids, aren't they? Yeah, but the thing I liked about Ruiz in that fight is I'm not going to claim my back in at all to win the fight, if anything, the opposite. But... You know, when he got put down, he didn't crumble like the other guys, and he, and he was confident enough to take the centre of the ring, he was confident enough to play up close, and it makes me question if this was, as Joshua said, this is his best camp ever, and you know, this is what he needed, things were getting a bit, you know, boring at EIS, this, you know, this guy turns up out of shape, you know, off another training camp or fight into this fight, but he showed the heart of a champion, whereas Joshua, I think Teddy Atlas put it basically this way, that, you know, he might have been sleeping too long in sold pajamas and he's made too much money that he doesn't have that in him to, you know, get up and fight. I don't care whether he get dazed in the round or not, he should be putting out Andy Ruiz. That's the reality of it. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, exactly. So basically, Joshua is 22 and 1, and... He's been he's he's been beat now, and you know obviously he's dropped down to box rec number three. I don't know how they can have him at number three, to be honest, because. But well, Andy Ruiz, a eh? box rec is all max, isn't it? Yeah, it's all max. But Andy Ruiz, he's the man at the moment in bottom box rec, right? and then you've got Wilder Joshua. You'd have to say Andy Ruiz, he's the man to beat. He's got four out of five belts, Rico. Technically, hasn't he? Yeah, it's a tricky one because obviously Fury's, you know, he hasn't lost, he's drawn a fight, so, you know, Fury's been out of the ring, but his only good kind of win after that, or, you know, fight after that has been against Wilder, and then Wilder's been doing his job, but hasn't been given a chance to unify, but it just means the heavyweight division is a lot more interesting now. Yeah, yeah, it does. You're, you're right, mate, it actually... You you're actually right, and I look at the top. Uh, I look at the top twenty now, and you've got Dave Allen at twenty. <laughs> God, I know, I know that's that's how poor era is, and Dave's my pal, but it's a poor era, isn't it, Rico? Yeah, it definitely is. But you know, I think this shows that if Fury and Wild are able to make a rematch across, you know, top rank and PBC. I think it's the case that Joshua has been prevented from fighting these guys. I, I think he'd probably take the fights, but he's been yeah. prevented from fighting these guys. And actually now, you know, with Ruiz having the belts, and I don't think the rematch is going to happen personally, it just means that, you know, we'll have these guys fighting each other for the belts, and that's what the division needs. It, it doesn't necessarily need the best fighters, but it just needs the best fighters facing each other. Yeah. I, I agree with that, but I, I look for I, I look at the top. Well, you've got Carlos Tackham ranked twenty five, and you've got Dave Allen ranked twenty. Who would you Who would you say wins that? Yeah. Well, I'd probably go for Tackham, but then again, Tackham's shot to pieces, isn't he? He's shot to pieces. I never. I've heard he. I've heard that Tackham is he, in the mix to fight Dave Allen if he beats uh, David Price. Now, Takam is 39 this year, so he's 39 in a few months now. He, maybe Dave's getting him at the right time. He's probably, that, at the moment, Sky would probably put that on headline, wouldn't they? Yeah, like, to be honest, if Dave beats David Price, I think you know he should be a level above Takam in that sense that you probably would have matched him with someone actually plays ranked relatively high and actually adds value rather than a guy that's but matchroom tends to you know get these house favourites and they just fight amongst each other yeah but I've got a question for you yeah. do you think we not you and I but you know the British public media everybody wanted um, Joshua 
posture to be so good that they just overlooked all the flaws, you know, all the stuff outside, yeah. what's been happening, the big entourage. Yeah. Do you think it's just that we were just deceived? Yeah, I do, yeah, I do, yeah. I think that they wanted a... Uh... I think they wanted a Frank Bruno type figure. It's, it makes the Brits feel good if we've got a heavyweight champ. And the, but the, the the name of the game was Joshua: The Road to Undisputed. But yeah, and he and the, but they never made they never made weight. They never made the wilder fight. Did they to get all the five belts? Did they? Yeah. And and, and then they got Ring Magazine belt as well. And my argument is this: right, they never made the right moves to make that fight because they were protect they've had to protect his chin aren't they basically he's Lawrence Cole has done him money David Price Dubois Dubois has done him money in uh, in uh, I'm not sure he's dropped him, but I he said he dropped him in that interview uh, I saw he said yeah he, I've dropped him so Price did him a uh, Cole is not going to admit it because he's his manager isn't he so he's gone silent yeah. but you know, I, I'd heard of somebody who was a former world champion who told me, and it wasn't Carl Frotch who told me, but, you know, boxing's a small community and you hear things all the time. I heard it in the gym down here. But at the end of the day, right, bottom line is this. Anthony Joshua is a very, very, very lucky human being, right? Because he got caught dealing in drugs, right? He, he was on bail, right? He yeah. was on bail. For a bad assault and it broke it. Oh, were he on bail for the drugs first and then he broke that with no, it was his assault. He was on bail for assault. First, yeah. He on bail for assault and then he then he got pulled while on bail with the drugs, didn't he? That's it. Right, now McCracken read the right act to him of the assault, but he didn't do nothing about the drugs. Now, you've got a guy here carrying off like that, beating people up in the street, going around in gangs and selling drugs. It, all, doing all this in a, in a leased Mercedes Benz from opposite the EI. Sorry. Right, I'll back up a bit then, because I don't know how far, I've, I think I've cut that out. My argument is this, right, Joshua, uh, how can I explain it? My argument is this, Joshua has been at the EIS, right, for how long would you say, Rico? Nine years? Before he was kicked, before the drug thing. Nine years, yeah. Now he got yeah. done for an assault, he got the riot act read to him off McCracken, and then he got done for the drugs, but nothing happened. So as far as I'm concerned, he's been allowed to do what he wants up there, right? Now, anybody else who's been done for anything up there, McCracken's threw them out of the GB team. They were thrown out. I'm not going to mention names. I know kids that had gone up there and it was over really before they got started because you have to understand that a lot of kids, you know, 19, 20 year old boxers, they're not the best well behaved at times, are they? <laughs> no, no. And they're mixing up there with athletic, athletic sprinters and people from different backgrounds but it's all team GB in it so you've got to look at it like this if you're not going to behave McCracken's there to install discipline now they're saying that Terry Edwards didn't install discipline when when Billy Joe and Frankie Gavin were riding high up there they they were the main boys up there they were terrorizing area Billy Joe used to get behind wheels of, of, of some cars and he'd let rip up and down that main road at a cliff and people would be like, have you seen them GB boxers in, in that car? And you just stay away from them because they were lunatics. <laughs> but uh, Billy Joe and Frankie Gavin took a chase, didn't they, off police? Billy were driving and they got into trouble. So I think after Beijing, they looked to put somebody else in or to install discipline. And Joshua came on scene then from Finchley ABC, I think. And yeah. he's been done for, he's had, he's been arrested and done for them charges and why were he allowed to get away with it? I'm going to tell you why, because he's the new Frank Bruno, isn't he? They were moulding him even back then. Yeah, exactly. And as I'm just going through this record here, right, the Anthony Joshua record, I'm looking at it here and all I see is fighters that have been matched carefully. I mean, for example, my friend David Allen from the same village as me, right? 
He's frightened to death to come on channel now, obviously, because he's well in with Macho and he's not going to risk it. Yeah. Same as Carl Froch is not going to come on channel, is he? Because he works at Sky, doesn't he? And I know what's he going on. Married, didn't he? Hey. He just got married. Yeah, he got married in Italy. Yeah. Uh, he's he, with his pal's place. He got married at, so he probably got a discount. <laughs> 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 but uh, no, I'm getting back to David Allen, right? David Allen's. Right, since he got beat against Yoka, this is who he's beat. Nick Webb, he was losing that fight and he caught him. Nebo's a journeyman, Bracamonte a life and death. Brown shot to bits. If he beats David Price, they're saying he's going to fight for European title or he's going to fight Tackham. Now, what, what happened to the British title? Why is, why is that being bypassed? Well, because they're top fights and they fight for them fighters, so... Exactly, so... So what is it about for David? Is it about buying houses? Because he's got four houses now around here. Is it about buying houses or is it about belts? Because not so long ago, all it was for David was about the belt. It weren't about money. Am I right? Yeah. That was a British title. Now, what is it about now? I have no issues with fighters fighting for money because at the end of the day, you know, you know your level deep inside you and you yeah. know how far so you might as well maximise but my issue with the whole Joshua thing has been that you know the fans have been paying for the money and we've all been conned and yeah but point I'm trying to make Rico, point I'm trying to make Rico is the ma the matchroom fighters going to David here now David's been matched carefully and there's fights he's not back David's knocked back Joyce. He, he went to see David A. He's knocked the Joe Joyce fight back. He's knocked the Dubois fight back. Now the, the, these are good fights for him at the time, but yet he goes and the, he goes and takes the Yoka fight. If he can take the Yoka fight with a gold medalist, why could he knock the Joyce fight back? I don't get that, mate. I know it's because it's in France. Well, obviously I do get it, but. Why, why, why do it? Is it cost? There's no shame in losing to a gold medalist, but you'd, you'd yeah. not want to fight a silver medalist, or is it because he's sparred Joyce? I'll tell you why. It's it's because at that time Eddie Hearn wasn't picking up his phone to him. Yeah. So he took whatever was given, so the circumstances have changed, haven't they? Yeah, oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Be a Eddie Hearn wasn't picking up the phone, so he could only take what he could short nose his fight against Yoko. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I see what you mean, yeah. And do you think Eddie Hearn would be putting him on any shows if he would have lost to Nick Webb? Or would Nick Webb be on those shows? No, if you lost to Nick Webb, he would have done money. Exactly. But, I want to see David get a belt. He's not got a belt yet, not even a central area, but he's ranked 20 in the world, so... what is is that a Twitter fighter? Or what? what is that? I don't, what, what's happening? What's happening? for you back on Joshua yeah. why isn't someone there to tell him who usually would be the trainer to say you can't have a 30 man entourage walking in matching tracksuits in Miami during training camp yeah. you can't be hanging out with your boys you know days before fights just sitting there in a big house and everybody you know looking after everybody why isn't there anybody there that has his actual best interest at heart and also you know isn't if nothing is going to change, are they just they just killing their own cash cow, aren't they? Is everybody too afraid to say to Joshua, this is not good enough? What's going on? Now, what it is, right, you know, you know, around certain people, when, the, when you're the champ, everybody around the champs, yes men, right? And if you're not a yes man, you fucked off, they fucked you off. I've seen it many, many, many times, many times. You're not allowed to, to go against what the champ wants, so whenever they do anything, you're just gonna say, beautiful, James, beautiful, 15 round fight of you, James, beautiful, beautiful. You know, like Jim McDonald, you become like a cheerleader, and I've seen it many times, many, many times, and he needs somebody, you know, like Josh Wales dad, you know, Mick Whale, bless him. He needs somebody like Mick Whale to say, listen, mate, no, you don't do that. You do it like this. Or somebody like Teddy Atlas. You know, you make, yeah. you know, you know, you know, nonsense type of trainers. Yeah. You know, you guys that, they're not really fucking bothered about 
who's got the best car or who's got the best watch. They're just there because they're boxing. Now, and I don't think McCracken is like that. He doesn't he don't do road work with fighters. He believes that they should do that on their own. So, and Plus he hasn't got the time. He's running a GB team up there. And I don't think he's cut out to be a top trainer. Now... People can say, oh, that's harsh, that's harsh, how can you, how can you get on like you do with Carl Frotch and then you say that. Well, I think Carl Frotch would have been a better fighter without McCracken. He had it in him anyway. Before he even met McCracken, he, he, he missed out on Olympics in Australia by skin of his teeth. He was robbed and he won it. He was the first one to win a medal at World Championships, which is the same uh, format, isn't it? So... How can yeah. how can we say that Carl Froch wouldn't have done better with another trainer? He's dying. He, Carl Froch made McCracken look good, but Joshua is a bigger version of Carl Froch, isn't he? He's got that same style, hasn't he? Freeze and force, Carl. Freeze and force. That's it. He's got that same. Hey. Carl Froch had a great chin, and Carl Froch had a heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joshua's got a heart, you know, I, I know I gave some yeah. stick, but he has got a heart, but he didn't show it in that fight, but don't forget he'd been clipped on top of his head and we could all be getting this totally wrong, you know. He were clipped on top of his head and he were winning fight till then, he'd already dropped that other guy, so who's to say that he won't just moan Ruiz down in rematch and then have a trilogy with him? Yeah, it could be. And end up making millions and millions and millions and we're all going to be sat here. 12 months from now, after he's beat Ruiz twice, sat here crying. I'll be sat here saying, fucking hell, I'm going to get a job down pit like my old man. Do you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm going to go on record and say, I'm glad he got beat. Fuck Joshua and fuck Eddie Hearn. They've raped British boxing now for long enough. Now, I'm not saying that just because Frotch has retired. It left a bad taste in my mouth how Carl's career petered out with the Chavez fight and the 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 other things behind the scenes that I'm not gonna repeat on here that you know about, but I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not digging Eddie Iron out for that. I didn't like that stub up. I still don't like it. I'm not happy with the British media how they don't ask questions about stub up. They just don't say anything. It's because they don't want to lose the press passes. Nobody's saying anything about the black superior race tweets. And me, for one, I don't think that it's fair that he gets off the hook and he's painted as Mary Poppins or Mother Teresa when you've got other fighters that are more deserving of, of, of awards. I mean, they've given him an MBE and an OBE. This is a kid that was selling drugs, right, and bashing people in gangs. Fair enough, he's turned his life around, fair enough, and that's good, because I've turned my life around, but... I don't want to hear about MBEs and OBEs and fucking going for drinks with Prince Harry. I want to see some proper fights. I don't want to see people dining out on holding the belts to hostage, because in my opinion, Rico, Anthony Joshua, he held that belt hostage... And how long did he have that belt? April 16. So he had it 30... Ha! Huh. He didn't even have it as long as Clinton Woods had his. Oh, my. He had, he, his reign was 38 months. Mike Tyson and Clinton Woods, their reign was 39 months. So, Clinton Woods in, in a TV boxer like Joshua. I mean, he, sorry, he into every interview. There were no social media in them days, right? Clinton Woods was just a tough man who fought anybody. But you didn't see Clinton Woods whoring himself out. For example, I've just been on this website here looking to see how much them Joshua t-shirts are that say no excuses, no apologies. Have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. I've been on the website. Did you, do you know they do 67 different Anthony Joshua on Under Armour t-shirts? 67 different t-shirts! That is unbelievable. One of them's got one of them even had just a picture of his fucking hand. I don't want to see it, mate. It's, and what it is, right? Do you know they've even got Anthony Joshua pillows? Oh my, oh my word! They do Anthony Joshua pillows. They don't do Carl Froch pillows, and he brought pay-per-view back. 
I think... Otherwise I'd have a Carl Frotch pillow, because I've got a Porky's Corner pillow. <laughs> In fact, Nicola, put a Porky's Corner picture of the pillow up, just to show them that we might be selling a few. We'll put Joshua out of business. <laughs> yeah, go on, Rico. What? No, I was just about to say that. If it... What, you want to buy a Porky's Corner pillow? <laughs> I, I, when I come up, I'll get one. I'll get one like you Nick Dennis's shoes, that's what I'm going to say. Yeah. He shouldn't leave them about, should he? <laughs> uh, exactly, same size. Yeah, um, so. Does he want to be a celebrity or does he want to be a boxer? That's why I don't get because, you know, it's all well and good going on one or two shows, but it seems like even after this fight, he was playing in New York doing some Eagle Boss stuff. Yeah. Boxer. Yeah. You know, you can't be a good boxer if you train six months here. Listen, mate. Yeah, Andre, uh, go on. I was saying you don't see Dillian White training only when he has a fight. He's always up in Loughborough with Mark Turks doing some good work, and that's how you improve. You can't just train for a fight. Imagine you being a footballer and having six months off. It just doesn't work as an athlete, does it? Now, do you think that Mark Tibbs is going to let Dillian White be messing about modelling and all that? And could you see Dillian White doing that anyway? Dillian White's a fighting man, isn't he? I know I give him some stick and that on here sometimes and that, but at the end of the day, Dillian White's he's he's there just to take your head off. And he, if you know Dillian White, if he's got beef for you, he's got a fucking beef for you, right? But he's not going to fucking hug and kiss you after the fight. If you went up to Dillian White and he's heavyweight champ at will, and you're fighting him and you start saying, "Can I grab old?" Your belts and that, he'd go, fuck off, bruv. Would it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, imagine, exactly. could you imagine? It, it ain't gonna happen, is it? But Joshua, he's trying to turn this loss into a PR marketing campaign. Yeah, I mean, it's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. You know, as a fighter, when you lose a fight, not to say I've ever been to the ring, but what I want to see is you being, you know, remorseful about it. You know, feeling actually looking like you're upset about losing your balls, not there saying inspirational quotes and pretending to be all Mr. Nice, because we all know when the camera's off and he's there with his dirty man answer was, they're not there all saying how great Ruiz is and how much they, you know, respect him. Oh, a setback, a set up for a comeback, you know. Not even Ali got beat. Yeah, but Ali was a bad loser, right? Ali wasn't there telling Fraser how much he liked him afterwards. No. They were never mates until the end of it. They, you know, they reconciled to a certain extent, but Ali's not mate with you. If Ali lost, he's, been, he's not going to be happy about it. Listen, let me tell you this, right? Dillian White got beat against Joshua, but he's shown chinks in Joshua's armour, and Joshua, right, he still hadn't corrected them chinks, and that were, that were what? Three and a half year, four, nearly four year ago, right? Three, more than that were a long time ago, wasn't it? Right? Now Dillian White has gone nine and zero oh since then with five knockouts. We a new trainer, Mark Tibbs. I'm not saying this because I get on all right with Mark Tibbs. I'm going to say it because yeah, he's all right, Mark Tibbs. The proper boxing people, aren't they? Uh, I'm saying it because it's there in fucking black and white, mate. Nine and zero, oh, right? Nine and zero. Oh, Five fucking have had an early bath. And let me tell you this, mate. Uh, he's done Brown and Parker, former champions, and Chisora twice, right? And he's got Rivers next. Fair enough, you'd have to class. You'd say that they're not elite guys, but he's done it to put his son in a situation where he's for. How many, how, many, how many eliminators has he had now? Well, you must have said the Hellenia swipe was an elim eliminator. Brown fight as well. Well, vacant WBC silver is that eliminator, isn't it? Well, it probably is, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, looking at this here, right, he's gone... Uh, pff, WBC international belt, that gives you a ranking, doesn't it? Joshua had that belt, you know. Do you remember when Joshua at WBC... Uh, International yeah. champion, and they were moving up to they were moving him up to number one, weren't they? And he jumped yeah. to IBF, didn't he, Joshua? Yeah, well, because that was the easy route, right? Yeah, but why didn't he fight Wilder? Because he said it were about the WBC being the best belt. Now Dillian White's gone that route. Eddie, do you know what Eddie Hearn thought 
I'm going to keep Dillian White away from Joshua and I'll let it, and I'll stick him into uh, to Wilder and see if he can get the belt because Joshua would rather fight Dillian than Wilder. Now it's all blown up in the faces and they're out on outside looking in. And Joshua now he's in an hard fight now, but I think he can still beat Ruiz. But I'm going to make Ruiz favourite. What do you think, Rico? Yeah, I agree. I think you know that was a bad night for him. He didn't look his usual self, but. You know, what Ruiz posed was the problems which we've seen the frailties throughout his career. But, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, because what is there that Joshua can change in one training camp that can make him beat Ruiz apart from some tactical stuff? Well, this is what I think they're going to do, right? And you can say I've got it wrong. I'm not going to say I've heard off a source or I've heard round the campfire on the grapevine. No, I'm not going to say that. I know that there's a few things wrong in that camp because I have heard back but I'm not saying it's McCracken, I'm not saying it's boxing related, there is problems in the camp right, there's a lot of we should be doing this, we should be doing that because everybody becomes an expert, now I'm going to come to Eddie Earn's defence here right, Eddie Earn has took Joshua this far and done great for him but this is, this, this is how I look at it, right? After they fought Vladimir, right? After they fought Vladimir Klitschko, anything after that would have fight too far if it weren't Wilder because they said Wilder were next, didn't they? So, after after they fought Vladimir, Takam, right? He shouldn't have been near Takam, but we'll give him benefit of doubt. He had Takam instead of Wilder. Then he, he had Parker to say, well, it's a unification, we'll get to Wilder last. Now, the, the fights too far, definitely, were Povetkin and Ruiz. They were definitely fights too far. It were just cases of milking the, milking the cows under too long. Now, after Vladimir, Eddie Hearn said, oh, it's Wilder next. So, he's had Takam, Parker, Povetkin, 15, 30, 45, he's had 80 million. He's had, oh, if you count it in dollars, he's had about $100 million since Vladimir, right? I don't know what he gets taxed like, but he's had $100 million since he fought Vladimir. But he's now cashed out because he's on outside looking in. Now, it is possible, and and if I hope everybody watched that video that I did yesterday. It's not out yet, but because I haven't. Uh, we haven't finished all inserts for it and stuff, but the video we did yesterday with Dennis, Dennis was at the IBF convention with various people in boxing in, in Macau, and people were saying that it might not be watertight, this contract, because if Hearn stayed on out there to sort that out, why ain't it sorted out? Hearn triggered the rematch after nine seconds in the interview in the ring, didn't he? Yeah, and also having a contract agreed versus having a contract signed are two completely different things. Yeah. Yeah, there's no, listen, verbal contracts mean shit. I mean, if, if verbal contracts meant something, I'd have had Dennis in court 100 times when he'd come out with stuff like, oh, right, we'll sort this out and we'll sort a lot. And I'll say, you've said it now, and then I'll pull him up on it a week later and he'll go, I didn't say that. Verbal contracts don't mean shit. They don't mean shit. All they do is cause problems with people. Right? That's all they do. They cause problems with people. But it is what it is, isn't it? But this is how I look at it, right, Rico? This is how I look at it. Joshua and his team, they've milked it too much. They've gone too far with the easy fights. Now, he fought utter rubbish. Going up, going for the belt, he fought utter garbage. I mean, and I mean garbage on a massive scale. Massive. A massive, massive scale. And it's, it's I fucking, he's gone from winning British title to being gifted a world title. From winning it to being gifted it. A world title. And then they've just gone into full fucking milking it mode. And like I said, for 38 months, they have fucking milked it. And Joshua now, oh, he's a fucking superstar. And he must be thinking, oh, he's looking down on me. I were a drug dealer. I were bashing people up. And I just went to the gym to take a bit of boxing up. 
and the rest as they say is history I swear to God right he is so lucky but something has happened Rico in that camp that's why they brought the sports psychologist on in right that was before he got knocked about in sparring so something is going on with the kid and do you know what I think it is I don't think it's boxing. I don't think he's going to get any better at boxing. He's just like Dave Allen says. He's just an athlete that can box a little bit. But he's such a good athlete, he can pick things up and that. You know what I mean? Because he's that, he's that good at everything, you no know, sports-wise. Now, and he's just been marketed. He's a marketing person, the dream, isn't he? But, as, as I've just said to you, he, he's got to the stage now where I think they're flogging him, aren't they, that team? He's got that much on. He, he must be pulled all over the place and he did look relieved losing them belts but I don't want to see people like Dave Monitor Lizard Coldwell coming out doing interviews about Joshua's mental state all of a sudden everybody's a fucking doctor Coldwell's the fucking most disloyal man in boxing and he knows what I fucking think about him if he's got a fucking problem email me Dave porkycorner at mail.com you know good cunt but get, Nicola will probably cut that out, but getting back to, uh, no she won't, because she knows how I feel about him. But getting back to uh, to this with Joshua Rico, I just think that he's been pushed too far. I think he's been pushed too far, and I think he's took too much on. Now, no matter how they try and mask over it, the natural monitor lizards like Spencer Fearon, uh, Tony Bellew, uh, Adam, the spin doctor Smith, Mr. Bean, uh, and uh, Johnny Nelson. All these are going to push the macho narrative. And anybody who wants to get on Joshua's undercard, like Anthony Fowler or Awara Davis, I like Awara Davis, right? And I've met him, but I don't want to see him coming out with stuff like that on social media and tagging Joshua in and things like that and doing videos about it. Your job, Awara, is to box, right? Not to come on there and defend Joshua. You're not Team Macho no more, Awara, so why are you doing that? Are you unhappy with Uncle Frank? Because, because there's something not right there. These people feel the need to all of a sudden stick up for Joshua uh, and make excuses for him and blah de blah Do you think anybody would have given a fuck about this camp if he'd have knocked him out in third round, Ruiz? Now, what the fuck did all be saying that Joshua's best thing since sliced fucking brown bread? What do you think to that, Rico? Uh, I think, yeah, I think it's, I completely agree. And I think the issue with Joshua is that he isn't his own man. Like, he's not in control of his own destiny. He's being pulled from pillar to post. There's people, you know, asking him to do commitments. Do you think, you know, good, do you think you can get Carl Fox to do all this stuff extra? He's like, no, I'm focused on training. I'm focused on being the best fighter I can be. But Joshua wants to be a superstar more than he wants to be a boxer at first stage and, you know guys like AK Skins and others making their names out of making their names of Joshua are going to push him to do all this other stuff and the moment he loses again or you know something happens they're just going to desert him and that story has happened in boxing time and time again but these fighters just don't learn yeah, yeah, listen, do you know all them gimps that knock around with Joshua, right? I've been up there, right, and let me tell you this, right? All they do all day is sit on edge at ring and just lounge about all day waiting for him. And it reminds me of, right, when I used to go to Jersey and I used to go to Dennis's, and everybody knows he's got a place and it goes on to... It, you, it comes out and you go straight into onto the sea. There's a, it's all there to win pools, jet skis, and a lot. But when, when you're at somebody else's, not beck and call because I'm my own man, but when I were over in Jersey at Dens, right, you like, you don't know what to do because you, you haven't got your car, have you? You, you? And you're at somebody else's place and you're sort of like waiting for like, are we going for a meal or what are we doing, you know, kind of thing. And and, and I don't like things like that, so I told them, they just give me keys to a brand new uh, Range Rover and I was flying about, with me and Femi Tola were, were bouncing about over there. You know Femi Tola, the boxer? Yeah, yeah I remember it about, yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and like, we, he were going to gym and that, and I were taking him to other end of the island, to Dennis's gym in Jersey, and picking him up and stuff like that. But I still felt, 
you, you, I can explain, I felt awkward about that, you know, going over there and here's you, getting your keys to an apartment and stuff like that. But how do them people feel around him, around Joshua, because they're there daily, aren't they? I, I've been to Jersey five times for about five days at a time, but they're with him for three months, aren't they? Exactly. Do you see where I'm coming from? And uh, and they're like uh, uh, they can't they can't eat until Joshua eats. They can't go anywhere unless he needs something. And you know, he's back and call. So, do they, are these people on the dole? Have have they not got jobs? What do these people do? Do they just sit around waiting for handouts all day? Because that to me is they're, they're not their own men, are they? They're just not, oh, they've, they've not, they knew him at school or something, so he's given him a job. I mean, one of them, I've heard he's given a job, he just films his interviews. Let me just change the battery, Rico. Uh, yeah, is, is that is that what they do? They, do they just sl sl lounge about all day, waiting for handouts, this AKA skins or whatever he's, who, who is it? This guy with ponytail, right? Who looks tough at all these wains and walks about and um, and that who, who's the big guy who threw the water? Is that that Neil, that big six foot ten job? I think so. And then there's cousin Watson. I can't remember his name. Cousin. Who, who were crying in the crowd? Because two of them, coloured lads, were crying in the uh, were crying in the in the crowd, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Uh, were, uh, were that one of them that skins? Skint is the one with the ponytail. Oh, he's done. Well, I didn't see him, but I saw two others crying. Well, any, anyway, end of the day, mate. Th listen, do you know what? When Frotch was champ, he never had an entourage. I goes, where's your entourage, Cobra now you've got the belt? When he was WB, he says, I don't need an entourage, Porky. Do I need anybody to tell me when to go for my dinner? Or what? All my dinners are all here in his, in his bag. He had all... Well, he was going hell be all, actually. He, 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 were, he had sea bass and broccoli that day, but he, he'd have them in his bag, you know, ready him in Tupperware, the meals for the day and that. Or because he's very meticulous, he writes everything down, but he don't need anybody to tell him when to f eat and all that. Because they've all got to go on payroll, haven't they? So Joshua's got all that pressure, Rico, hasn't he? Yeah, because they all need him for, you know, they all need to stick around and tell him he's the best. So nobody's going to give him any home crews and also apparently there's a guy whose job is to look at everything he does. How many hours he sleeps, how many, you know, what he's doing in terms of reps, you know, what he's eating. That's one guy's job. But he should be doing that himself. He's training. You know what? Somebody's telling, do, do they measure it length for these shits that he has? Probably do. You're having a fucking laugh, is that straight up? Well, I heard a story, right, from one of my mates who, who, who works with an industrial cleaning company and they clean up at EIS and he said that one of them now's come in and he's doing the filming because they didn't want to give everybody else the the ad money, you know, off YouTube, which is not very much anyway, as you know. That's the guy, Josh Denzel, that was on Love Island, so... That's know, what? This guy from Love Island's doing it all. Yeah, yeah, he's at him, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the guy doing the filming then? Yeah, but, you know, they all... What I saw on Instagram was basically a lot of the Long Island guys descended on there. So it's, it was just a big party for everyone. Listen, mate, there's no, Joshua's a boxer. He needs to go back to being a boxer. He needs to get rid of all the shit around him. I mean, he might say there's nothing wrong, I just got caught, but... There's something wrong when his dad's going in that ring and having to go at Eddie Hearn. And, and, he, and he's trying to say now, no, there's no excuses, take it like a man. And they've even brought a t-shirt out, no excuses, no apologies. And they're selling them now at 26 quid like hot cakes on Amazon. Now, and on, on Under Armour. They're trying to turn it into... Uh, He's, he's a loss and now you're going to see what he is and I mean Eddie Hearn's come out and said he wants to fight in New York Joshua to put it right well good luck to him but he embarrassed all those Brits and to be honest with you could you imagine what Frank Bruno would have done to him if they fought yeah it would have bladdered him wouldn't it Beating. It would have bladdered him. Let me tell you this, right? When Frank, Bru when Jimmy Tibbs got all the Frank Bruno, right? He was all right hand and cock, right? So Jimmy showed him how to have a fucking left hook, a uh, uh, left jab. Do you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, mate, Frank Bruno were all right hand like Frotch was. And Joshua, he was the same, you know, when he started. He was all right hand. And he's got a bit of a jab now, hasn't he? 
Well, not in the last fight, but he was pouring with his jab. He had no power behind it. Yeah, he, what, he were re they call it reaching, don't they? They were reaching yeah. with jab. Well, unless you were just using... Trying to against a smaller guy, which is weird. Yeah. And another, that other guy, Ruiz, he fought smaller as well, didn't he? With crouching. Yeah, and then he was trying, you know, he was trying sort of punches, like going around, like sort of hooks around that guard, because Joshua's defense is so basic, he doesn't move his head. You know, he doesn't faint or anything when he's attacking, so he's just trying around the guard. Well, he, he went for it, Rico, didn't he, Ruiz? And we have to give him credit because he's box rec number one, he's got four of the five belts, and he's beat the man who didn't beat the man. Does that sound mad? mad? Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, uh, he says here... Go on, you were saying. No, I was just going to say, I'm going to have to shoot off, go out for dinner. Let me just read this out to you before you go right. In, two, no in 2009, Joshua was put on remand in Reading Prison for what he describes as just fighting and just a bit of some crazy stuff. He was made to wear an electric tag on his release, right, because he got community service and tagging, didn't he, after two-week remand. Right, he then says, in two... It, that were in 2009, that were for fighting. Then in 2011, he got pulled over by the police for speeding in Collindale, which is up near you, isn't it? North yeah. London. Well, that's where my mom uh, or my aunt lives. Yeah, uh, he but... says he was found with eight ounce of skunk hidden in a GB sports bag in a Mercedes leased from Sheffield. He was charged with possession, intent to supply a Class B drug, an offence that carries 14 years. Joshua was suspended from GB squad and sentenced to a 12-month community order, which means you have to be good for a year and 100 hours unpaid... He got 100 hours community service after pleading guilty to possession intent to supply at Crown Court. But when he was asked by that uh, barbershop guy, he just said, oh, it was just possession of weed, just a bit of personal. He made out that it was a bit of personal. Well, that's not true here, because it's here. Pleaded guilty. and Because when, when do you get community service for a bit of personal? You don't, do you? He, 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 so, if you are, you know, you'll know this better than I do, but if you are in, you know, you've got already some previous... You possess the gate house, eight ounces of skunk. 220, 225 gram, it says here. 225 gram. Yeah. I mean, try and smoke that yourself. You'll be, <laughs> you'll be dead. Listen, mate. Eight, 225 gram is eight ounce, isn't it? That's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Na well, nine ounces is, is, is 252 gram, isn't it? 252. Because it's 28 gram, isn't it, an ounce? So... So if it's two fifty, so he's got caught with eight ounce, right? And it, but he's saying it was personal. Well, it, that's just to make up. But yeah, when he got pulled, they drug tested him, and they said, "No, you're a dealer because he, ne he, he never came up as a urine test, you know, for sell it for for personal use." He, he gave him a negative test. That's why the charge stood, and he pleaded guilty. McCracken went to court for him and everything. So that's another lie from him and Eddie Earn. Do you know what I mean? They fucking make you laugh, mate. They make you laugh, honestly. A fucking what uh, what they've done is unbelievable like that thing with Eddie Chambers um, the pole dancer it just fucking makes me sick mate there's the bullshit around it if Tyson Fury had got caught with 8 ounces of skunk mate let me tell you I swear to god right he would have been hammered they would have hammered Tyson do you know what I mean yeah they definitely would have done I mean look Tyson said a few comments and look what he got he was basically exiled from the UK yeah, they won, mate. In the UK. Yeah. What's gone on is a travesty, but, like I said, take the body away from him and look at who he has beat, and if somebody said to you, we're going to give you the guy here that's beat these particular guys here, and, and what, what do you think about this kid here? And you'd think, well, he's not bad. If you put a fat man in Joshua's... Uh, give, give a fat man Joshua's CV... He won't be anywhere near what, uh, how he is. Good genetics has got him how he is. But in my opinion, I don't think they wanted that Dillian White fight. I think that fight will come at the end of their careers now.
once and for all. You're probably right. You're probably right. I think it will, honestly. It's like a calm rug fight, isn't it? Yeah, that that well, uh, that's not going to happen now at all now because it's gone very bitter and from what I've heard, Kel, Kel's not even training, so. Yeah, well, no surprise there, but you know what I mean. It's one of those fights that can be milked at whatever point. Well, this is how I look at it, right? Eddie Hearn. Before you go, I just want to talk on this before you go and the yard situation. Eddie Hearn. Has Eddie Hearn, Rico, ruined Kel Brook's career? Yes, because he had an option to go to PVC. I think it was after the Porter fight. And imagine, he could have been in the mix with your Thurman's, Danny Garcia's, uh, you know, all these other guys. And even at 152, where he's currently fighting, you know, he's not going to get near Jared Hurd, you know, J. Rock Williams, Charlo. He's not going to get near any of these guys. Like, who can Eddie bring in, bring in for him to fight? He's going to have to put another path for. Yeah. Eddie Hearn's forgotten about him as well. What's Eddie Hearn doing with him? He's not even talking about him in interviews. Eddie's what? Not even what? Oh no, no, that's it. Well. There's some that's gone on behind the scenes, hasn't it? We we we, we Kel Brook and, and and Eddie. And it'll more than likely be Kel's uh, dad who's, who's dad, got yeah. involved. Ted Weiss. Who's going to be the next one? That's going to that's going to happen to Callum Smith. Callum Smith fight against anyone decent next few years. Callum Smith, right? He's got millions in bank right from that tournament, hasn't he? And. I think he'll just bow out soon. Because uh, what, what is Callum Smith doing? Look at Callum Smith's record and look at the Smith's record, the family. <clears throat> They've gone 3 and 12. They've had 15, world, 15 fights against world champions. Yeah, former, current, and future world champions. And these are the three wins out of the 15. Rocky Fielding, he weren't a world champion at the time. He Callum beat him, didn't he? Uh, Groves, he had a bad shoulder injury, didn't he? Yeah. He and Hassan and Dam. So we've got uh, uh, a, f a former, current, and a future champion there. Three champions there that Callum's beat, but one of them had a belt. One were a former, and one were a future champion in Fielding. That is Callum Smith's career, but he's got a Ring Magazine belt. How fucked up is that? And he's not a young guy either. No. Nope. 29 or something. And he was 31 month in, in the top three with WBC. 31 month in the top three and never had a title fight. Because they kept waiting and waiting and waiting and refusing and waiting for an easy one, didn't they? And dragging it on and dragging it on. He said he's just jumping in and having the fight. They, they took the time with him, fair enough, but... Callum Smith, in my opinion, has swerved people until the timing were right for him. He didn't want to fight Groves when the, when Groves wanted it, did he? No, he no. only fought him because of the tournament. I well, that's right, Rico, that's exactly right. But they were getting mega money in that tournament. But the news at the moment is that Eddie Hearn might be doing a heavyweight tournament. That's the word. So, in England. So, if he does, we call her. After Christmas, if they do this tournament, right, at heavyweight, will, uh, they'll have every fight in England apparently, will it, will, will it just be for the Muhammad Ali trophy, and will Eddie come out and say, boxing isn't about belts, it's about the fights? Yeah, but what he'll say, you know, this tournament's the best fighter against the best, finding who the best fighter is, yeah. blah, 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 pay per view every card, heavyweight tournaments. And the final will probably end up in Saudi Arabia or something. Yeah. Right, well, well, let me just finish on this then before you go. Are you going out like Rico? Yeah, we're just going to go for dinner around the corner or something. You, you and your lass? Yeah, just go for dinner and a drink. Good man. Uh, and let me just finish off on Anthony Yard. What is happening, Rico? I know you're a big Anthony Yard man. Like me, we're both Anthony Yard men, but who has he beat? No one, he's beat no one, but um, I think I think there's been chat about being a, you know, WBSS tournament for light heavies, but apparently that's not happening, that's what Warren has been saying. I don't know, I don't think Team Yard's not going to be accepting the money that's an offer, so I think it's sort of cool and waiting for a better fight to offer. But when that fight comes up, we'll have to see how good the Yard is. Yeah. They, they, they've been calling out Kovalev or saying they're ready to fight him for a while, so 
I think they think they've caught it at the right time, so it's a typical Frank Warren tactic. You know, if they can beat Kovalev, then they'll hold the bar for hostage. They're not going to fight against anyone decent. Yeah. Do you think, Rico, that Anthony Yard has kind of like trod, wa- trod, trod water? His, his best win, basically, is uh, 25 on box rec. He's not beat a guy in the top 25, has he? So do you do, do you think that Anthony Yard is jumping too far if he fights? Uh, because he's 18 and 0, 17 is iced. He's ranked number 10 on box, reckon he? But do you think that Anthony Yard is just not? Do you think he's rushing it a bit? I think they're waiting for the payday. So that's money. What they saying four or five million US dollars? That's going to be more than he could get fighting. You know, your Bullionis back in the day, or you know, Callum Smith or Boatsy or stuff. So. They know, even if he loses this fight, people will say, well, he wasn't ready, you know, he can come again, all that stuff. But I think what they're doing is they're just rolling the dice here. And I think from a management perspective, it's not a bad move. If he wins, he beats a paid champion that has a good name. Uh, if he loses, he's get, getting paid well and he can come again. Yeah. He move up the cruiserweight, although he's short. I, I met him before and he's shorter than me. Who is? Yard, he's shorter than me. He's six foot in a yard. Well, I'm, I'm just over six foot and he's shorter than me, so he's probably more like 5'9". Is he? No, it says yeah. he's six he's foot on box, he's, right? He's, he's very built up, but he's tiny. Yeah, he, uh, he like I said, he, he's, uh, well, two years ago we were fighting Chris Hobbs. Six and one and a draw now. Richard Barriani or something, but his best win, you'd have to say, is Sex Locker, wouldn't you? That's his best win, 25 on box rec now. I don't know where where Yard's going next, he doesn't have a fight lined up, and uh, but we'll finish off on uh, Gorman then. What do you think to Gorman Debar? I think Dubois will catch him. I think Gorman's a better boxer, but I think Dubois so heavy-handed that he'll catch him at some point. Yeah. Yeah, Dave Allen says Dubois good. He says he's powerful. He's very strong in clinches. And, uh, he's a hard trainer. That's the other thing. Unlike Joshua, you know, he loves boxing. Him and his sister are both, you know, great boxers. Yeah, that's good. If that's good, it uh, keeps them off off streets, doesn't it? Uh, the young young teenagers aren't. They? If they've been doing boxing, it's that's good. If they're taking, I wish government had put more money into boxing and get kids off streets, because boxing yeah. does work. And I, I keep banging on to it. I keep banging on about it to Rosie Winterton, my local MP. And uh, are, are these MPs listening, or they just out for the for themselves? I don't know. We know the, we know the answer to that, Ross. Yeah, we know we know we know the answer to that, don't we? But I'll get off anyway, Rico, because yeah, I know that your missus. You. Hey, we'll continue chatting on WhatsApp, all right? Good speaking with yeah, you. Yeah, good. You you'll go have a nice evening with your missus. She'll be stood next to you now, pointing to her watch, won't she? Probably something like that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Rico. See you, pal. Say hi to the and kids. All right, cheers, mate. Bye, bye. 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 Well, that was nice to speak to uh, Rico. Uh, he's a uh, nice kid, Rico. Uh, I don't think I've been hard this week on Anthony Joshua. I think that I've just uh, had my moment, and I think I needed to get it out of my system. I think what Eddie has done. Is nothing short of scandalous, uh, and I mean nothing short of scandalous. With Joshua, he's pulled the wool over everybody's eyes, and uh, now they're going to sort a rematch out, and they're probably going to have it so that if Ruiz loses, he gets another rematch, and that's just how it how it's how it's going to be. I'm afraid it's going to be a trilogy job. If Ruiz loses next one. It's a trilogy. If it's a draw, there won't be a trilogy. But it is what it is, isn't it? I just think that you know the the milk in it. I mean, Joshua, he's off to be. He's off doing modelling and all that. What? 
Is it just about money with them people? It's about business. Business, what? Walking about in some clothes, is that what they call business? Is this business what I do when I when I talk in meetings with people about the channel? Because to me that ain't business. Business, in my opinion, is when you're builders or bankers and stuff like that. Not fucking YouTube or in modelling clothes for you or boss. How's that business? Jesus. I don't know. Joshua needs to contract... Uh, Joshua, in my opinion, needs concentrate on getting a good team around him because it looks to me like there's too many people on the payroll they're all walking around in these track suits and uh, it looks to me that they've took their eyes off the ball and the, his team could have ruined a good kid because it would have been nice to see him come on I mean why doesn't Robert McCracken bring somebody into the camp that can add something to Joshua's defence I mean, is that such a bad thing to bring somebody on board? Is that such a bad thing? They could, they could bring somebody on board. They could bring Andre Ward in or Lennox Lewis just to tighten up his defence and add something to his game. I mean, they've got nothing to lose, have they? Or is it a pride issue? Does Robert McCracken not want anybody in camp? Are they going to get under each other's toes? Is that what they're frightened of? I don't know, but it is what it is, isn't it? So, it is what it is, but, well, it's, uh, the channel's going good. Oh, look how many, uh, look how many people are in. I'm looking at this picture here. Obviously, I've not got a camera on. There's a picture here of Joshua. He's, he's here. There must be... 24 people in his in his in his thing in his entourage i mean i'm hearing stories about free range rovers when they pull up somewhere there's free range rovers and he's in the middle one in like a convoy what what is all that about is it like is it like puff daddy because that's what puff daddy does doesn't it hey or, big news. or jay-z that's what they do isn't it it's craziness they need to go back and concentrate on boxing that's what he needs to do. He needs to concentrate on boxing, go fight Dillian White, and tell the rest of them to jog on. If they don't, if, they, if they're asking for stupid money, jog them on. But that's what I think. I just think it's crazy. But that's the boxing industry for you, isn't it? So let's see if we can find this Eddie Hearn. Let's see if we can find this Eddie Hearn talk sport thing here. Let's see if we can get this. The Eddie Hearn. So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting the best sport in the world, boxing. And keep pushing your local MPs to back boxing and fund all these gyms in the country. There's all these amateur trainers out there, right? There's amateur trainers in this country that they're the unsung heroes. They're not... I can explain it. They give the time up these amateur trainers they give their time up to teach kids boxing and get keeps them off street and you might only get one every five thousand that wins a world title but so the odds are massively massively it's, it's easy to get to turn pro as a footballer but these amateur trainers who give the time up they are the unsung heroes in my opinion and they do it for free now I want to see more of them people in boxing, that's what I want to see. So, alright, peace out. Keep supporting boxing. Keep subscribing and liking the comments or disliking it, doesn't matter. And keep leaving the comments. Keep sending your emails in. And uh, thank you for your support, it's been great. It's been a great uh, last six months. I'm new with Nicola, we're, we're, on, we're on, right, uh, on right track, alright. Let's get gone. Let's uh, get out of here and find some more stuff we can film. Give you guys a treat next week. Ta-ta.